Welcome back, folks, to Let's Play Betrayal at Krondor, and when last we left off, we need to get Gorath to Krondor as quickly as possible, which is why the first place we headed to was north to Yavin. North? But that's further away from Krondor, I hear you say, and you're absolutely right. But we needed to check out that place to get a suit of terrible armor and buy a whetstone. This thing is going to eventually pay for itself, as we'll be repairing every weapon that we come across. Not only will this work to improve Gorath's weapon craft skill, it will also improve the quality of the blades and thus make them more valuable. And we really want the weapons to be more valuable. This thing is basically going to make money for us now. We did lose time by coming here, so let us see if we can make that time back. Though we must note, it's starting to get late. And we don't want to travel too long in the darkness, because it being dark means we can't see as much, and generally we don't want to get too tired. So, let us uh, keep going. It's getting very dark now, it's getting very dark. Let us get off the road and rest until... Dawn. Now we can uh, click anywhere on these dots and it will uh, make time move on. Also, we can see here the rations that we have. If we click to here, it consumed a ration apiece. That's fine. Now we do want to explore off the beaten track here because who knows what we'll find. We could find enemies, which wouldn't be too terrible, or we could find this box. And an encounter. Someone was calling. Recognising the lilt of the young voice, Owen turned and looked back down the road. A young squire that he had met at a party in Yavin was trudging behind them, a pack full of scrolls slung over his shoulder. The squire waved congenially, and Owen echoed the motion. What do you think you're doing? We're trying to remain unnoticed! Damn! Locklear muttered under his breath. Try to behave as normally as possible. Since you know him, you handle him, Owen. And remember, Gorath's name is Thorgath, Owen finished, irritated. I'm not a child, you know, Locklear whispered. That remains to be seen. I didn't expect to see you again quite so soon. I would have thought you all the way to Lamotte by now. Would have been if a duchess hadn't insisted on introducing me to all of her daughters. Amelia was the prettiest, I believe, though I think Catherine took quite a liking to you. Hello, Philip. Catherine took a liking to everyone at the party. She's as fickle as her mother. She'll likely marry a condoin if she can find one not tied in the marital knot. True enough. Say, I thought you said you were from Tyburn. Why are you taking this route home? Kind of a long way around, isn't it? Well, yes, but I had to meet up with my Uncle Locklear here. And my other friend here is an elf, Thorgath. They decided that it would be nice for me to take a tour with them down to Cron... Hawk's Hollow. Nice save there. Down to Hawk's Hollow. I hear it's lovely this time of year. What are you up to? I'm looking to cash in a reward, actually. When I was on my way to Yavin last month, I found a chest in this area, but I couldn't pick the lock on the thing. I figured it wasn't meant to be, and I left off. Thing is, all through the Duchess's party, I couldn't help but think about it. I had chest on the brain. I don't really care what's in it, I, but I have to pick that lock. Interesting. Let's get some info. I'm afraid my senses of direction and distance are a bit off right now. We all had a bit to drink last night, and we're still trying to shake off the effects. Which way is the nearest place we could get cleaned up? It must have been quite a bender if you're that confused. Head straight south along the main road, and that will take you on to Lamut. If you're looking for good food, the Blue Wheel is a solid wager, though I warn you that Tesuri food can be a bit spicy. Ooh! I, for one, could do with a little less sleeping on the ground. Any good inns that you can recommend? There's the Blue Wheel Inn in Lamut, or you could try the Dusty Dwarf in Hawk's Hollow. I suppose if you got really desperate, you could try breaking into one of the abandoned houses out in that part of the country, but I can't sleep well in a house that may fall on top of me. Of course, it may well be that the people have moved out for good reasons. I've heard that several people south of L'Oreal moved out after a contagion began spreading near there. Ooh! And because we heard about empty houses, we have a conversation topic. Was anything left behind in any of the abandoned houses you saw? Nothing of real value. Bits of food in a few cupboards, an occasional gold piece kicked beneath the foundation of the house. Lost items, mainly. The majority of the places I visited had those unpickable locks. What are they called? 
Weber locks, yes. They had the Weber locks installed, and so I wasn't able to get inside. Ooh! I'm not certain, but I think I may have mislaid a very valuable belonging of mine. I shouldn't worry about it. Depending on where you lost it, the chances are good it will still be there. Is that the game telling me not so subtly that items dropped on the ground or in boxes remain where they are? That is a really interesting little, uh, way to, uh, state that also. I can click things that, uh, are empty, but nothing happens. And we can say goodbye and carry on to this chest right here that I definitely want to check out. Also, we succeeded in not revealing that we were on our way to Krondor. Actually, we totally revealed we were on our way to Krondor, but there we go. The boxes did refuse to budge. It appears to be locked. Shall we try to open it? We shall! But we're gonna do so with you lockpicking it. Are you the best at lockpicking? Uh, yes, by quite a way. Let's give it a go. So, let's try lockpicking it. First with these. Oh ho! The lock was simple. As the old saying goes, locks are for children and fools, Locklear said. After a few seconds, he flipped the pick locks into the air and caught them again. I am no fool. Ooh, that's some good armor. Shades of blue and alabaster chased one another round the surface of the spiral shell, winding tighter and tighter until the colors became an indistinguishable blur towards the center. While such shells were not entirely unique, they were sometimes collected and sold by poor peasants. Ooh. That's nice. This, however, is very nice. Also, I think we may have, uh, took the, uh, thing that, uh, Philip was looking for, but we definitely want this. We want to swap the armor around. So you now have that armor. You now have this armor, and you have this armor. It's not much better than 18%, uh, but it is slightly better. Now, let's look about. We want to go back to the road, and we do want to save, because uh, picks can break, and keys that you use to uh, open things can also break. Also, while I'm thinking about it, I should probably switch your skills back. There we go. Switch those back, have them like that, and have them like that. We still haven't gotten to combat yet! Game has been quite generous. Also, I'm going to save again, because I know full well I'm going to forget that I didn't, uh, set those before I saved. Right, back to the road. There's that there. Let's have a look at that. Something had been buried under the dirt. The hole's not big enough to put a man in, so it's safe to assume it isn't the grave. Might be a secret cache of food or supplies. Let's take a look. We have here... Aventurine. Uncorking the mouth of the oil skin, Locklear poured out a small portion of the gold-flecked lacquer into the, his palm and examined it. Named after a type of impure brown glass common in Relanon, it was an ideal resin to use on crossbow strings when they began to lose their cohesiveness. Ooh! And then there's this! Rations! Good! We like rations. How is your crossbow doing? Your crossbow is... You don't have one! It's not existent! That's what your crossbow is! We really could do with a crossbow. We also could do with not getting attacked. If that is, we could spot an attack coming. I'm just gonna look around here just in case there's... anyone? Nope, there's no one. And nothing as well. Where are we on the map right now? We are... We're right next to Labatt. That's good. What's the uh, time of day? It's not even midday yet. Excellent. We might as well make our way to Labatt. And that is to the west. Let's go. Maybe we'll find something uh, along the road. The path turned. Locklear studied the road before them, saw it slithered into the distance like a giant snake before descending eventually into a large town. Lamut, Owen said. Do you think we should go in for supplies? Sure! Ooh, this is quite big. 
In many ways, the town looked like something created on an alcoholic binge. Rude dwarven shacks smashed up against delicate elven shops, while weird Tasuri taverns grew from a press of kingdom-style dwellings. The sign outside the city gate had summed it up well. All who visit Lamat are equal, for in Lamat, all is equally queer. We have a shop, we have an inn, and that's pretty much it. So let's look at the shop second. Let's look at the inn first. Undoubtedly the newest tavern in town, the Blue Wheel was sedate, almost sleepy in comparison with other Lamutian shops. Inside, dark-skinned patrons slapped down hard-earned sovereigns in exchange for the Blue Wheel's exclusive imports from the far distant empire of Tesurinani. Tesurinani. I think that's how you say it. Let's talk to people. We could talk to you, there's the barmaid, there's this person, and there's you. Let's first speak with you. Locklear slapped the man on the back. Immediately he regretted doing so as the mercenary gasped, his face contorting into a mask of pain. I'm sorry, I didn't realize... Is your shoulder broken? Locklear asked. Don't worry yourself about it, the man spat between gritted teeth. I haven't exactly made the fact known. A faint popping sound issued from the man's back as he moved his shoulder, tears forming in the corners of his eyes. I was a courier for the dwarfs. I reasoned there would be less chance a brigand would try to intercept me if he wasn't aware I was injured. Locklear nodded sympathetically. Did you break it in a fight? No, a fall, the man said. Stupid man I am. I was in the dwarven caves, and I came to this pit. Part of the caves had collapsed, so there were all kinds of sinkholes everywhere. Since there wasn't a plank I could walk over, and I didn't have any kind of rope, I jumped. I think if I had the chance to make the decision again, I'd have waited until I got my hands on a coil of hemp. That is the game saying, hey, if you find any pits that you need to jump over, get some rope. Also, dwarfs nearby. There are people to talk to, like you. And we can bard! Let's talk to you. The dwarf drew on his pipe. Languid smoke plumed from the old codger's mouth as he studied Locklear, Owen and Gorath each in turn. Although he had long ago lost the use of his left eye to a Maud Hell sword stroke, his right eye still burned brightly beneath his bushy eyebrows. Being as a dwarf ne'er forgets as much as his own name, I cannot recognize a strapping young man before me who last I saw was a boy. No slight intended, but I fear I don't recall the occasion. As like the rest of your human kin, none among you can remember much past a week. If not for we canny dwarfs, you would have forgotten that you have a kingdom at all! I fetched you out of a cellar along with a score of women folk at the Battle of Sethanon. Don't you remember me, Loki? It's Dubal and Locke, everyone! A character that may be important in the stories, but I don't know them because I've not read the stories, but hey, that's a, that's a heroic thing to do. Dupal, of course. Glad to see you. I hadn't recognized you without the eye patch. What's a dwarf to do? I won this scratch fair and square, and I'll be a dragon's mother before I'll cover it up again. Shouldn't have done so in the first place. Now I just sit here to jabber with that Luna Vitasuri bartender and have me a few beers. Not much to do with the Macmodain Kadalo collapsed. A Brack Noor has been seen down there. They'll be offering a hefty reward for its slaying, I'll might you if tradition holds too. Something of a challenge, as they are fierce beasties even by dwarven standards. Ooh! I've heard tales of these creatures of stone. Thank you, Double. We have been pointed in the direction of a side quest that we may or may not partake in. Right now, though, there's you to talk to. Subani clapped twice. Abruptly, the festive mood of the room died, the clank of goblets and the scrape of plates falling silent as the bartender shuffled between benches to bow at Locklear's feet. Touching a gnarled fist to his forehead, then to his heart, he spoke somberly. Be welcome to the Blue Wheel Inn. May you find the drinks to your liking and the company of our patrons pleasurable. If there is anything our servants or I may do, you need only ask Sumani. Ah, honours to your house as well, Sumani. Am I correct in believing this is a drinking establishment? So it is. We serve many of your Midkemian drinks, as well as a few of the Suranuani, uh, Suranuani Empire as well. I'm never going to get that word right. 
Perhaps I might interest you in a cup of, uh, chocha. Let's talk about Sumani. Why did you decide to come to Mid Cameo and open an inn anyway? Surely we'll be better. You would get better business in uh, Kelawan. I was not always a tavern keeper. As a soldier serving House Shinzawai under Earl Kasumi, I was trapped here when the Rift Gate was collapsed at the end of the Rift War. It was our belief that we would never again see our families in Suranani or the green skies of Kelawan again. Green skies? Interesting. But Suranari warriors traditionally kill themselves if they're in danger of falling captive to an enemy. This is true, Lord. But the Earl informed us that we were forbidden to dispatch ourselves until given leave to do so by a Great One. I believe in mid Kemia you would call such a one a magician. Until such a time, I content myself with running the Blue Wheel Inn. That is... very pragmatic! I've heard that a permanent rift gate to Kelawan is located near here. I was hoping we could get a glimpse of it. There would be little to see at the moment. An internal conflict has arisen in the Empire between House Akoma and House Anasati. The Assembly of Magicians have ordered a temporary interruption of transport between the Empire and the Kingdom of the Isles until such time the conflict is resolved. I have been assured the measure is temporary. So we can't go there! That's the game going, <laughs> You can't go to that place, you're stuck in mid -Kemia. You said you were a soldier of the Tisserani forces. Would you be interested in teaching us some of your combat techniques? It would be my honor, Lord, but I would require a small fee for my services. If my armor were to be damaged, I would be ill-prepared otherwise to pay for its repair. The 75 sovereigns should cover any potential harm. Is this fee acceptable? It would be if we had 75 sovereigns. We don't. You're asking a bit more than I had in mind. How much can it cost to repair armor? My armor is to Sarani, and more specifically, I would require someone from the house Shinzawai to repair it. It is the way of my world. So what armor repair? I don't know how much longer our armor is going to last. Any idea where we could get it repaired? If your armor was the same as mine, I would suggest trying the garrison, but kingdom armor is made in a different way. I would think perhaps the dwarves in the Mac Mondain Kadal would be of assistance. I understand from speaking to Dubol that the small ones are gifted when it comes to the manufacture of weapons and armor. An interesting place to potentially go. Thank you for your services, Sumani. You have a wonderful establishment. It's very Tosarani. Your patronage honors us. Goodbye. I promise if I'm ever in Lamut again, I'll be sure to drop in for a bit of something to eat. Could use that and do some barding, but right now I, I, I feel like exiting and checking out the shop. If we can highlight the shop. We can! This is the Fletcher's Post. The Fletcher's Post had been constructed with elven sensibilities. Within and without, little if anything had been used in a manner that could be called scurrilous, and certainly nothing was merely decorative. Along the walls, the shop's array of arrows and other archery goods were finely displayed, and each thing seemed precisely in its place. Ooh! You have crossbows, light crossbows, elven crossbows, quarrels. Ooh, we have to buy arrows. Okay. We Ooh, heavy bowstrings as well. Armor. Weed walkers. Callum's dialect. Dialectic and magical scrolls. Ooh, new things to look at. Disdain and approval warred within Owen as he looked over the crossbow. On the surface, he couldn't help but admire its sleek lines and sturdy construction, but it would it would easily sling over his shoulder. But when blow came to blow, he could hardly credit it as anything more than a hunter's toy. So we're not really going to be getting much power out of that, but it's better than no crossbow. Then there's the uh, Tussarani light crossbow. The heft of the crossbow alone was assuring. Its potency seemingly worked into the very fibre of the weapon. Reputed to be more powerful than even the common mid foot soldier's crossbow, they were rare treasures hoarded by weapons collectors. Then, the elven crossbow. Ooh, super expensive. Applying the same principles used on the famed elven lombos, the crossbow had a composite bow made of wood bone and sinew, and the tiller was sheathed in parchment. If not elven himself, Locklear guessed the artisan of the crossbow had at least been in close contact with the archers, of Elvanda. And then we have quarrels. 25 there. Grabbing a quarrel at one end after the head, and the other end short of the flights, Gorath checked, to, checked the give of the bolt by gently bending it 
in one direction than the other. The spine of the arrow seemed good, as it seemed likely there would be little quaver as the quarrel was in flight. Ooh, use of that word. Locklear smiled as he examined a single quarrel. Its shaft perfectly fletched and true, it would fly unerringly to its target, assuming, of course, his opponent would do the, him the courtesy of standing still. Yeah, about that. Then we have these quarrels, the uh, Tosarani quarrels. The work of a wicked craftsman, the Tosarani quarrel was long, very nearly the length of a man's forearm, and twice heavier than standardised mid Kemian varieties. Twin barbs swept back from its laminate point and were meant to worry a victim's wounds, inducing bleeding and eventually death. Ugh. Heavy bowstrings. Several times thicker than the variety made for standard crossbows, the heavy bowstring had been manufactured by winding several cords of spun hemp around a central material and looping the ends for easy fitting to a heavy crossbow. Ooh, nice. Threading his thumb through the ends of a silk bowstring, Gorath yanked as violently as possible to test the flexibility of the cord. While it seemed sturdy enough to handle the stress of repeated firings, he hoped it wouldn't disappoint him when he sighted down on an ill-intended foe. And then we have these. The strange elven footwear was far too dainty to suit his taste. Dyed bright green and trimmed with a thin cord of gold, they were obviously intended as something to be worn within boots or moccasins. Hmm. Then there's this. As the book looked and smelled quite new, Owen turned to the onion skin covered title page and discovered a dedication written here. This is a copy of a work scribed in the third year of the reign of King Liam I for Brother Forsham, Archer and Friend. And then, a magical scroll. Scratched out on the scroll in painstakingly lucid detail was a magical spell which had been titled Eyes of Ishap. We probably want that at some point, but it is really, really expensive. We probably want lots of this, but it's all really, really expensive. So, we'll probably come back here later. Right now, though, we need to bard. This is going to go really badly wrong. Actually, no, let's... Let's leave first. Then, change this so that we have... Barding selected, and then it's all gonna go terribly, terribly wrong. Oh yeah, so if we go west again, there we go, we just quickly walk to here, we're gonna bard. Uh, I'd cover your ears, probably. Owen struggled with the lute. As soon as he began to play, he felt he was not so much playing a song as he was resting a beast a hundred times his size. Numerous times the song eluded him, slipped out of his reach only to fall into an obscure pit of noise. Out, 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 the tavern keeper urged, yanking the lute from Owen's hands. Be glad this crowd isn't in a worse mood. Give them time to calm down and then you can come back. But only if you're coming back for food. So that went Badly? Yeah, that, that did not go well. I mean, we tried. We need to get better at that. We, we do need to get better at that. And so, when we come back, folks, we're going to keep exploring and we may even find some combat. We have literally found no combat whatsoever. We also haven't found many bits of treasure along the way, but I'm sure we'll find more as time goes on. And so, I'll catch you next time, folks, and I'll see you then. Later.